While Joaquin El Chapo Guzman was serving out his sentence in a maximum security prison in Mexico, his sons, a longtime associate from the cartel, and even his wife worked together to plan the specifics of his ultimate escape. In the video we will cover today, the main topic will be whether or not El Chapo is indeed planning to flee. Before we begin, we want to remind you to subscribe to our channel and watch the entire video so that you can obtain all of the information. Damaso Lopez, age 52, testified against Guzman on Wednesday while wearing a prison uniform in navy blue. Lopez once worked as a prison official and supervised Guzman, but later went to work for Guzman. Lopez did not work as a prison staff member during either of Guzman's breakouts, which occurred in 2001 and 2015. In 2015, Guzman staged a daring breakout from the Altiplano Maximum Security Federal Prison by riding a motorcycle through a tunnel dug into his cell. Lopez says that he had met with Guzman's four sons on multiple occasions to coordinate the digging of a tunnel, purchasing land close to the prison, and renting the warehouse where Guzman was taken before being flown to a hideout in his home state of Sinola. Lopez claimed that Guzman's wife, Emma Cronol, would convey notes from Guzman to the gang after seeing him in prison, urging that they carry out specific responsibilities in preparation for the escape. In the federal court located in Brooklyn, Cronel sat there and listened to Lopez testify against his former boss. She has not been accused of committing a crime. A spokeswoman for the Office of the United States Attorney responded with silence when questioned about the possibility of criminal charges being brought against Cronel due to the claim. When asked about the accusations against Cornell, Guzman's attorney, Jeffrey Lichman, responded, I am not concerned, while a representative for Cornell declined to comment on the matter. Guzman, who is 61 years old, had pleaded not guilty. He may receive a life sentence in prison if he is found guilty of international drug trafficking, conspiring to murder rivals, firearm crimes, and money laundering. When Damaso Lopez first contacted Guzman in 1999 at Puente Grande, a maximum security jail, he was a high-ranking official working for the Mexican prison system. Lopez said that the two individuals became fast friends and conducted favors for one another after their first meeting. Together with the request of other inmates, Guzman would sign his handwritten messages to Lopez and mail them to Lopez. Guzman also inquired about obtaining a mobile phone used for illegal activity. Lopez stated that the defendant could access his email account using the phone. According to Lopez's testimony, he too received assistance as a result of the transaction. According to the allegation, Guzman presented him with a property worth 1.5 million Mexican pesos or around $78,000 and a gift of approximately $10,000. In 2001, Guzman successfully evaded capture at Puente Grande by disguising himself in filthy clothes and fleeing the facility in a laundry cart. Lopez stated that he was not involved in the escape, which allowed Guzman to remain free for more than a decade after it occurred. Lopez stated that he maintained communications with Guzman and went to Guzman for assistance when he was having trouble finding work after leaving his position in the prison. Lopez expressed his gratitude by stating he offered me a job. Throughout his testimony, Lopez referred to Guzman as mi compadre, which translates to my friend. Lopez worked for Guzman for the subsequent 15 years. The phrase, in everything, my compadre was my boss, was spoken by Lopez at one point. When Lopez first entered the stand on Tuesday, he tapped his palm on his chest while looking at Guzman. Guzman's attorney, Eduardo Balerezo, questioned Lopez about why he had done this, and Lopez responded by saying that it was because I love him. We hope you're finding this video interesting. Stay tuned till the end to learn more secrets. Till then, go hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Lopez stated, he is with whom I spent much time together, and I feel affection for him. After Guzman's breakout from a prison in 2001, the two began developing a close relationship. Lopez testified that the distance was far too near. According to this individual, Lopez began working for Guzman by assisting him in acquiring properties. Later, Lopez would organize drug shipments and mine his government contracts for intelligence about operations against Signora Cartel members. Lopez testified that Guzman ordered many deaths of cartel associates, some of which were not carried out, and that Guzman was responsible for collecting all of these executions. According to the allegations, Lopez occasionally acted as a messenger, giving Guzman orders to carry out various forms of violence. In addition, Lopez stated during his testimony that he was personally responsible for the abduction of several individuals, but that he had never committed a homicide. Then, after more than a decade of evading capture, Guzman was apprehended and transported to prison at the Altiplano Federal Penitentiary on February 22, 2014. Lopez's birthday. 
This came after Guzman had been on the run. The plan for the escape. Guzman and Lopez maintained their relationship even after Guzman was transferred back to prison. Lopez stated in his testimony that an attorney gave handwritten notes from Guzman. Guzman would write in the letters that Lopez should be cautious about the people he spoke to and he would also tell Lopez that no one should know where you sleep except for you. In the days leading up to his detention, Guzman was roused from sleep by officials as they attempted to place him under arrest. At the end of March of that year, Lopez said he met with Guzman's wife, Cronel, in Signola, where she relayed a message from Guzman in prison. The later stated that Guzman was thinking of once again taking the risk to escape from prison. He wanted to know whether Lopez would help. Lopez said he agreed to assist Guzman in his escape attempt. Lopez also stated that Cronel Guzman would convey messages to the gang from their father, who was incarcerated at the time. Guzman requested that the team provide him with firearms and an armored pickup truck in addition to renting a warehouse close to the prison and purchasing a parcel of land in the area. Lopez said that the land was necessary because a tunnel needed to be constructed. Lopez stated that he and Guzman's sons decided to purchase a watch that would provide them with precise GPS coordinates of their father's prison cell to find out exactly where the tunnel was supposed to lead. Guzman called for another group meeting to discuss the progress that had been accomplished. Lopez stated that he had committed himself to get what had been expected of me. It wasn't something you could do overnight, but I was working on it, he said. It wasn't easy, but I was making progress. Lopez testified that he was not involved in digging the tunnel and that Guzman's sons were handling it. He said this in response to a question about who was responsible for the digging. Lopez stated that at one point, Guzman's sons informed him that their father was hearing noises of excavation beneath him. Lopez stated that the digging occurred several meters below Guzman's cell and that noises were coming from the concrete floor. Guzman broke out of the prison that was located in Altiplano. Guzman planned to break out of prison during the weekend when fewer corrections officers were on duty. A week or so after his dramatic escape, Lopez ran upon Guzman. At that point, he was informed of the specifics of the getaway. Guzman related to Lopez that he had heard noises associated with the tunnel construction for several months. Lopez stated that it had been quite challenging to break through the concrete. It resulted in a great deal of noise, which irritated the other convicts who voiced their complaints about it. After Guzman had broke free from his cell and entered the tunnel, a motorcycle and a ride had been waiting for him there. This driver led him through the tunnel to an open land area, where an ATV picked him up and transported him to a storage facility. After that, he was transported to a different city where a pilot and an airplane awaited his arrival. He was taken by helicopter to a hiding place in the mountains of La Tuna, located in Signola, where he was raised. So, this is all the detail we have gathered. What do you guys think about it? Do you have any more to add to this topic? If so, do make sure to write a comment in the comment section down below. If you liked the video, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more updates in the future. And I will see you in the next video.